In this video, I want to compare instrumental variables estimators with least squares estimators in regard to their consistency. So, as always, we have a linear model of y and x, and we've got some problem with x being endogenous in terms of the error. It's x is correlated with the error. So, in these circumstances, we can derive both the probability limit of beta hat least squares and compare it with the probability limit of beta hat IB. So we can write the probability limit of beta hat least squares, so we write that P lim beta hat least squares, is equal to the covariance of x with y divided through by the variance of x, which I'm just going to write sigma x squared. And this is the probability limit because I've replaced the sample sort of things which we would normally have here on the top and the bottom with their population analogs. So when you ever see the covariance as it's written here, we're talking about population quantities. And then if you go ahead and substitute in the explicit form for y into this relationship, it's very easy to prove, and I've proved it in previous videos, that the probability limit of beta hat least squares is equal to beta plus the covariance of x with epsilon divided by sigma x squared. Okay, so that's the probability limit of beta hat least squares. I'm actually gonna use a little trick to simplify this a bit by just introducing what we mean by the correlation of x and epsilon. The correlation of x and epsilon is defined as the covariance of x with epsilon divided through by the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of epsilon. And when it's written like this, it's very easy to simplify this probability limit up here. And when we do that, it becomes beta plus the correlation between x and epsilon. And then we sort of have to pre-multiply it by sigma epsilon divided by sigma x. Okay, so that's the probability limit of beta hat least squares. What's the probability limit of beta hat IV? So beta hat IV, the probability limit, is just the covariance between Z with Y divided through by the covariance of Z with X. And by substituting in for Y explicitly, we can actually write this as beta plus the covariance of z with epsilon divided through by the covariance of z with x, oh, x. And then when we simplify this, we can write this, if I write it down here, it's equal to beta plus the correlation of z with epsilon divided by the correlation of z with x times sigma epsilon divided by sigma x. So a lot of maths, but we're, we're finally there now. So both of these second terms, so this term here in the least squares estimator and this term in the IV estimator, we can think about as the asymptotic bias of our estimators. Or in other words, what is the bias of our estimators as the sample size tends to infinity? And we can ask what are the conditions under which the asymptotic bias of IV estimators is better than the asymptotic bias of least squares estimators. Well, all we have to do then is we just have to say, when is this term here smaller than this term here? And if we do that, because we both, in both of these expressions, we've got this sigma epsilon divided by sigma x, we can just say that it's better to use IV estimators when the correlation of z with epsilon divided through by the correlation of z with x is less than the correlation of x with epsilon. Okay, so what's the intuition behind each of these parts um, in this expression? So on the left-hand side, this sort of top part of the expression here, we can think about as how bad is our instrument. So how correlated is our instrument with the omitted factors epsilon? So that's how bad, as we define badness of an estimate, or, or IV rather. The bottom we can think about as how weak is our instrument. So how correlated is our instrument relative 
to our independent variable. And then on the right hand side, we can just say, well, this is just how endogenous, how bad is the problem of endogeneity, if I can spell it. <laughs> So the idea is that if we have an instrument which is sufficiently strong, so there's a high correlation between Z and X relative to how bad it is, then it is a good idea to use instrumental variables. However, if we have a very weak instrument, so this bottom here is very, very small, maybe around zero, then even a slight sort of badness of our estimator or our, our instrument rather will mean that it is better to use in, uh, least squares than instrumental variables.